I love medieval fighting games. Having played a lot of chivalry many many years ago, Mountain Blade, Mordhai and more, there's just something so immersive and satisfying in outsmarting your enemies with classic sword and board combat. But as a massive fantasy genre fan, I absolutely love the idea of mixing this more grounded and weighted system with crazy powerful magic and faster paced gameplay. So in this one, let's talk about Warhaven, the good, the bad and just my general impressions. Do click like down below to show support for the video because it really does help and subscribe and click the bell because we have so much content planned for you guys every day that you definitely don't want to miss. Comment down below if you've ever played similar games like this before and what your preferred weapon type is. I think I lean towards a classic Zweihander for myself. Let's start off with the graphics and get this out of the way first simply because the graphics and visual effects for the game are actually pretty good. Better graphics means easier immersion for me, so it's a factor of the enjoyment in terms of any game that I play, and of course gameplay is a much bigger factor and role within that, but if the game looks visually pleasing, it helps me get into the game and keeps everything engaging. Similar games to this, particularly older ones, of course don't look nearly as good or clean graphically speaking, which adds to the spectacle of battling groups of players or an intense 1v1 fight, so it is a bonus. In terms of your heads up display, as well as objectives and other things on your screen while you're playing, I would say that it's pretty effective at letting you know what's going on within the match at any given time. You can see your health, abilities, their cooldown, your immortal gauge, the team score at the top, and where objectives are and who's currently capturing them or taking them. Enemies are also slightly highlighted in red, while teammates have a little blue circle above them, and squad members are highlighted in green, so visually everything is relatively clean and simple to understand with whatever situation is ahead of you. It might be a little cluttered at times, but after a couple of matches, you kind of get used to it and you can easily know what's going on at any given moment. The visual effects of attacks and abilities are nicely telegraphed with glowing weapons or shields, glowing characters when they're under certain effects, as well as the crazy abilities of the immortals. On Soldier Death there is a neat crumbling into chunks of stone style animation which I think is a nice unique touch and it's very satisfying to see your enemies smashed into pieces after a good duel. So overall, the graphics get my approval for a game in this genre. Now we'll go over the gameplay, and I want to say to start with, this is a playtest that I have played, so I haven't had access to absolutely everything the game has to offer, in terms of one of the game modes that's already been revealed, as well as the possibility that certain characters, abilities, or even the maps might change in the future. There were two game modes that I got to play, Onslaught and Skirmish. I explain these in great details within the beginner's guide that is already on the channel, but essentially Onslaught is a larger map with 8 total foothold objectives and a front line that pushes forwards or backwards if you're winning or losing, while Skirmish is a smaller map with only 3 footholds, one large centre point for scoring, and two smaller ones for controlling a closer respawn point, as well as a huge cannon that overlooks the main objective. I enjoyed both of these modes, but I did find Skirmish to be my preference due to the faster paced nature of the smaller map, as well as more intense multi player battles happening there, so I did really enjoy Skirmish. The current modes do promote more than just running around and swinging your swords though. You need team and squad play, timing of your pushes to take over an objective, and just generally it promotes more tactical thinking and gameplay rather than straight up battling. I think the game could use some kind of free for all or simple team deathmatch mode in terms of getting into simple duels, practicing your sword play and the characters, instead of these more objective focused gameplay modes that are currently in the game. Furthermore, I think the game is sorely missing a siege mode style game mode, such as how chivalry handles it. Bashing open a castle's gates, assaulting the walls and pushing enemies back through the use of battering rams and other siege weapons is just begging to happen in a game like this. So I do think it is a shame that there is only two relatively simple game modes to play, and although there is a third mode that I didn't play called Arms Race, where you're basically scoring points and pushing catapults towards your enemies' totems, it isn't quite the same as laying siege to a castle with one attacker and one defender side, so I would love to see a more siege focused gameplay mode like that. But don't get me wrong, the skirmish and the onslaught were still fun, they are just a little bit samey and it was leaving me with that feeling of wanting to play a siege mode. For the actual sword play and melee system however, there is directional attacks for up, down, left and right, which will be important based on the terrain around you. For example, if you're in a corridor, you will need to focus on more vertical attacks or you will bounce on the walls to your left and right. However, there isn't directional blocking, so the depth of similar games within this genre is lost when it comes to intense 1v1 duels. You may love or hate this change depending on your preference, it definitely lends to picking up and getting to grips with the game more easily, but as a consequence loses some of the skill ceiling. When you have a group fight break 
out, however, I personally still get the same feeling and satisfaction from fighting, despite this change. Then you have the addition of abilities and immortal power-ups or transformations. The abilities do seem like a nice addition at the start. Each class has a distinct feel and focus that lends them to fill their particular role and niche within the battlefield. Then you can level up your classes, and that gives you perks that also enhance those abilities. These seem pretty tame to begin with, but some classes definitely get better perks than others in my experience. One such perk goes to the Warhammer class, which gives them two seconds of invincibility when landing their headbutt skill. It is a headbutt though, so the range is incredibly small and hard to land unless you're right in the face of your opponent, but in a group battle setting is pretty nuts and could possibly be nerfed. At least I think that would be the case if the Warhammer class specifically wasn't so limited and easily countered by the other classes. So it's probably there to ensure that they can do something when you're going against someone that knows how to handle fighting them. So essentially I think some balance changes may happen, but I also haven't been playing at the highest level to know exactly how these classes square off against each other, and some classes definitely counter others. Then we have the immortal system, a percentage charge that builds up the more you play and the better you do within a match. It lets you transform into a powerful immortal, and this is where you can really go on a rampage. On one hand, if you let your guard down, you can really die quickly still, especially to enemy siege devices like ballista and catapults, but on the other hand, if you know what you're doing, you can be near unstoppable against regular soldier enemies. It's like being the chaser in Dead by Daylight, others can only run away from you unless they accept their fate and try to fight you and probably die. However, because everyone has access to the immortal charge, it does make for tactical plays such as popping your immortal charge when you see a nearby enemy pop theirs. On top of that, there are four different immortals to pick, with each one filling a different role and niche and being extremely powerful in their own way. I do love this system as it really adds something new and different to the game, adds more depth into team play, and gives it a real fantasy and magical feel in an otherwise grounded and gritty genre. So there are definitely some trade-offs within this game compared to others within the genre in terms of the depth of the actual melee fighting, but then you have abilities and the immortal charge on top, as well as more of a focus on objectives rather than actual 1v1 swordplay. So they're definitely putting their own spin on this genre, and I do think it sets itself apart from other games in the genre because of that. Depending on how experienced you are in other games like Chivalry or Mordhai, you may hate this or love this, so I do think it comes down to personal preference at the end of the day. I had a fantastically fun time playing it, but I also haven't played it enough to get to a really high skill cap to know what it's like when you're at the top of your game. But from what I did play, I had a good time, and I definitely recommend giving it a try if you like the look of it. So if you have any questions, or if you played the game for yourself, put your thoughts in the comments down below. And do click like if you found this video interesting, as well as subscribing, because we have so much planned for you guys over the next few days that you don't want to miss. The two videos on screen now we think you might really enjoy if you did make it all the way through this one, so definitely check it out, you don't have to, but if you do, tell us what you think after watching in the comments down below.